Welcome to episode 268 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my guest this week is going to return back to the show is Chuck Joyner. How are you doing, Chuck? I'm great, David. Thanks so much for having me. It's well, always a pleasure. And this week you fill in because I missed my show on Tuesday night. I know. So, so I, I, that's exactly how I you, you you caught on with me. I, I I said this is a perfect time to have Chuck on because he's going through a a, a Mac Voices live withdrawal. So I, that's here. exactly it. I I, I kind of got up Wednesday morning and thought, gee, I didn't talk to anybody last night. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Glad you're here. And uh, Jeff Gamet's here. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing all right, and uh, and Chuck, I blame you for screwing up my uh, my internal clock this week. Um, the this morning, um, at like uh, five till noon Mountain Time, I realized today's actually Thursday. Yeah, throws you which off. meant that mm-hmm. uh, I needed to have already launched all the apps to uh, to get the big show happening and I wasn't even sitting at my desk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, I blame you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, last, but certainly not least, uh, Ben, what do you think is here? How you doing, Ben? I am great, Dave. Glad you're here representing those Chicago bears there this week. Uh, the bears. Get, get ready for base football season here. Uh, so we're got some good stories to talk about this week. There's all kinds of fun things uh, to, to, I found this week to talk about. Uh, talk about beta. Beta keeps keep keeps going. We're getting close here, and uh, so iOS 17 being released. Uh, got a couple of great topics, uh, especially an Apple Pencil discussion that I think Jeff might kind of like. So we're gonna go ahead and just dive right in and uh, go with the news for this week. Um, Apple will soon be sending payments if they haven't already done it already for $500 million in the battery gate iPhone throttling lawsuit. iPhone owners who uh, signed up to receive payments under this, the Apple's battery gate iPhone throttling lawsuit settlement should soon receive your payments. And uh, it's, it said all the appeals have been thrown out. So Apple, you got to pay up. Uh, So if anybody doesn't remember what this was, this was uh, a class action lawsuit about uh, people who own the iPhone 6, 6 Plus, 6S, 6S Plus, 7 or 7 Plus running iOS 10.2.1 or uh, iOS 11.2 prior to uh, December 21st, 2017. It stemmed from Apple was what they were doing was they were they were tweaking, quote unquote, tweaking the performance of older iPhones, but with degrading the uh, with degrading the batteries to prevent them from shutting down. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think pretty much everybody re- kind of remembers what this whole ordeal was. Uh, Chuck, what do you think? I, you know, I, I look at this and and I, I've expressed my opinion plenty of times about some of these lawsuits and especially this one. I, Apple gave a completely reasonable, realistic explanation of what was going on, that it was actually to protect the user and the user experience. So, you know, 500 million seems like a lot. I know the first thing somebody's going to say is, well, Apple can afford it. I think it was just a matter of, you know, just, okay, let's just get rid of this. Let's not spend the money on the lawyers and let's not continue to generate the publicity. But, and I don't know what they can do to put into the terms of service um, that you have to accept that this is something that that they do for good reason. Or do they put a switch in that says, you know, hey, your battery's, you know, dying and, so if you want to get if you want to keep up your experience, you let it die faster. If you want a, a worse experience, go ahead and flip this switch and we'll downgrade. That seems to be the two solutions in my mind. But anyway, this one's gone. It's 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 off the books now, and and it was stupid to start with. <laughs> each person will get a whopping sixty five bucks. So yeah, what what do you think, Jeff? I think that uh, it cost Apple $500 million to be reminded once again that transparency is uh, is a much better way to go. If Apple had, had said when they implemented this feature, right. here's the thing that's happening, and this is why it's why it, it can happen, the, I, this wouldn't have been an issue at all there would have been some people that complained that that said oh no apple is just trying to spin something you're doing to to make us buy phones faster when the reality is they were doing something so people didn't have to buy phones as often Mm -hmm. right um but yeah they they should have been clear 
totally transparent about this from the point where they implemented the feature forward. And we wouldn't be sitting here talking about a $500 million lawsuit. This is true. This is true. And your thoughts, Ben? Um, well, I did have both the six plus and the seven plus. Yeah, I and I, did. I, yeah, I have no idea whether I actually submitted or not. Yeah. I mean, but honestly, just as Jeff said, if they would have been just like a preserve phone life button and Apple would have said something, a PR statement, uh, they would be 500, they'd be half a billion dollars richer. This is true. This is true. So, oh, well, another lawsuit and uh, we'll just not, we'll just move on. <laughs> uh, next story, uh, T-Mobile is their Go 5G Next plan is now going to let customers upgrade smartphones every year. Uh, T-Mobile announced that this week uh, that their next plan will design is going to be designed to allow you subscribers to update update their uh, smartphones on a yearly basis. The plan will be available alongside their existing Go 5G and Go 5G Plus options. Uh, customers who opt in will be able to get a smartphone with a no interest phone payment plan. And once half the phone is paid off, customers are able to, eligible to get an upgrade. T-Mobile says in most cases, customers will be able to up, uh, upgrade yearly. Uh, this kind of sounds familiar, does it not? I believe the plan that I'm in, the Apple upgrade program that uh, I'm perfectly happy with. And I think a couple of us here on the panel use are, are doing that. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? Um, good, good marketing move to keep people yeah. locked into your service. Um, th this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm happy to not be an AT&T customer anymore because they were yeah. doing the thing where they would let you replace your phone every year as new iPhones came out all the way up until the year they didn't. Yeah. And there was no warning. And they said, yes, you can update your iPhone to whatever model. And it's only going to cost you $500 extra because apparently what they were doing was letting, letting you uh, upgrade. But then just kind of uh, uh, keep keeping track of how early in the upgrade cycle that was for them. Yeah. And eventually they decided they wanted that money back. And uh, anyhow, so something like this, where it's very clear what they're doing, uh, this is great. And this is, this is a good way to, uh, to uh, help reduce customer churn. Absolutely. And uh, what are your thoughts, Ben? Uh, pretty much the same as Jeff. Um, this is pretty much to keep the people who go to the Apple at, uh, Apple Apple upgrade program into the T-Mobile fold. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, if you're doing that particular pr plan through Citizens and Apple, uh, you know, if another carrier's plan comes around that let you like better, well, you're not stuck with T-Mobile. Yeah. Well, I don't feel stuck. I've been pretty happy with T-Mobile. Uh, Chuck, you're on, on the upgrade program like I am, I believe. And, I mean, I would stay with it, wouldn't you? I'm on the upgrade program. I would stay with it. And and my concern about T-Mobile and not casting any aspersions at T-Mobile, but just like Jeff said, you know, how long will this last? Right. Because at mm -hmm. some point, you know, T-Mobile has to have a, a channel to take all those iPhones back and then get rid of them. at something that makes financial sense for them. Mm -hmm. Apple, Apple, we know, has that. You know, whether they decide to tear them apart and use the parts or sell them off in their refurbished store or do something else through a third third party channel. So I, I would be very interested in what T-Mobile's plans are for all those phones, assuming yeah. that this this program is a hit. So uh, this would be one that honestly, I'd be just a little bit hesitant to buy into at the beginning if I really felt super strongly about having a new phone every year. And, you know, it's because like what Jeff described, you know, if they, if they do pull the rug out from under you, then you're in a position of having to pay off the rest of the other half, basically of the phone you have in your hand, plus then figure out what it's going to cost you to put the new phone in your hand. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it pretty much boils down to just how badly do you want that new phone every year yeah good good question we'll see what happens but uh, hey another another option for the consumers out there um 
next story here, then uh, Samsung's done this before. Samsung's got the tri galaxy feature that uses two phones to demo the Z uh, fold five experience. Uh, Samsung uh, announced uh, the launch of the tri galaxy website that's designed uh, to allow iPhone users to experience what it's like having a foldable smartphone. Uh, uh, tri galaxy uses two phones to showcase the benefits of the Z fold five, with it's large display those unfamiliar with the device that's that that fold with the 6.2 inch uh, cover screen that folds out like a 7.6 inch display um samsung has long had a website to, that demonstrated well, how the android uh, ui has developed and has com- uh, uh, compete complete with uh, samsung apps uh so the, ga- the galaxy fold option is new i don't know if i even want a foldable phone honestly what do you think about this truck i when I first saw this, I thought, just how desperate are they to sell you on the idea of a foldable phone? Yes, this, I mean, exactly. you know, I frankly, though, I, I will admit it did jar me into doing something I'd been thinking about for a while, and that is to go to Amazon and see if anybody makes a case, a, a dual iPhone case that you could fold together and, you know, and unfold like a foldable and I, there's nothing there that I've found so far. But I, I looked at this and I said, okay, so first of all, it's Android. Even though it's an iOS app, it's Android. It, you know, they're trying to show you what it looks like. But right. I just felt like, you know, if you have such a great experience, you shouldn't have to sell me that hard on it. Yeah, by creating this website. It is kind of cool. You scan the QR code and it brings you to a site and it's emulating uh, the fold right on the on, on the website. So. What do you think, Ben? Yes, for only two thousand dollars and two iPhones, you can you can get the experience of an Android phone. Well, anybody who anybody who uh, who could who could actually try this can't afford the Z Fold now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Your thoughts, Jeff? Well. I still feel like foldable phones are a problem desperately looking for a solution. Um, so I, I have a hard time getting excited about foldable phones. What Samsung is doing in this case, however, I actually think is kind of smart because if you want to draw in new people, new customers that are more likely to have the money to buy uh, their foldable phone, then you need to go for the demographic that has proven to have a higher level of disposable income, which yeah. is the iPhone user. So mm-hmm. making a, a, a website, a marketing uh, scheme that's targeting that user specifically makes sense. Um, but like I said, I still see this as a problem desperately looking for a solution. Great, great. I'll stick with the iPhone. Thank you very much. Uh, Apple's support app is now offering more info on nearby locations. Apple this week uh, updated its Apple support app to be more useful to customers who are looking to get help from a nearby Apple retail location or an authorized repair shop. Uh, when searching for a store using locations feature in the app, there's now a good to know section and a store hours section, both of which are new. Uh, good to know. Apple lists information like accessibility options, where a store location is located, and provides with recycling, store hours. That's obviously self-explanatory. Um, but it also gives very easy ways of, of finding where it allows computers, uh, customers to search to help for their products, service issues on our Apple Care Plus. So I, I, I like what their, Apple's doing with the, this this the, the support app. They're, they've gotten a lot better with it, um, and uh, good good stuff here. Well, what do you think, Jeff? I'm glad to see uh, this. I mean, oh wait, wait yeah. who do who are you talking to? Am I just like jumping on top of Ben? I'm sorry. No, I did say Jeff, but <laughs> oh, then Ben, what the hell? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, all right. Uh, I'm glad to see this because it's really useful information. On the other hand, why wasn't this here before? Because this is exactly the kind of information that customers need and have needed for a long time. So it should have been there, um, but I'm still glad that it's it's at least finally happening. Uh, what do you think, Ben? 
Well, I mean, you have to be basically in a million plus metro to have an Apple store. For a lot of us to get to an Apple store, it is going to take a not to uh, unsizable drive. So the more information you can have before making that drive, the better. Yeah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. How about you? Uh, Chuck? Plus what Jeff said. Yeah, I, I'm sort of going to echo Jeff, too. I mean, this is one of those things that it just almost seems like a no brainer because you've already got the information on the website. So why wouldn't you just stick it in the app? Um, but, you know, there are other priorities and I understand that. So it's it's here now. That's good. That's all you need to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, next story here. Uh Good news for podcasters. The podcast, the Apple Podcasts, did launch a new subscription analysis analytics dashboard, uh, and that was this week. Uh, creators have access to the new subscription analytics uh, dashboard that provides an overview of how their podcast subscriptions are performing. Free tools in the Apple Podcasts uh, Connect uh, website. Uh, there's good overview, shows you how many downloads, and shows you uh, all kinds of uh, great information. Um, and Apple really never had a good uh, good portal like this, so it's, I think this is just something great. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? Yes, this is a very welcome uh, feature. Um, It's frustrating for uh, podcasters to get useful information, uh, all the useful information that they want from Apple Podcasts. So seeing the uh, subscription analytics element come in, this, this is really welcome. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Ben? Um, as Jeff said in the last one, why wasn't this here like 10 years ago? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Now, granted, 10 years ago, Apple didn't have subscription as an option in podcasting. However, your point is still absolutely valid. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Chuck? Um, I think the reason that you're you're seeing this now is because, at least in theory, there's a way to have this turn into a revenue stream because Apple gets a cut of, you know, some of the subscriptions. And so it makes sense to start giving podcasters what they want in exchange for the idea that hopefully they will create a, a, a pay for podcast. They subscribe to podcast. So, you know, it, and, and I have to wonder just, you know, how difficult it was to build this, but on the other hand, up to that point, why would they, I mean, they've they've been the big the big dog in the podcast marketplace for forever. Maybe not in the podcast player marketplace, but in the podcast delivery and discovery marketplace. So, again, it's a it's a it's a great thing. I mean, it's just one more thing that they're doing, and one more little revenue stream that can help add to the bottom line and pay that stupid five hundred million dollar fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then there is that. Chuck. Well played, well played. Yeah. Uh, Apple also is uh, in Apple Pay. They're now going to support the U.S. Uh, National Parks Foundation uh, this the, the, during this week. They'll donate ten dollars to the National Park Foundation for every uh, purchase made in the in the U.S. Uh, using Apple Pay for on Apple dot com, the Apple Store app, or the Apple, uh, at the Apple Store, up to a maximum of one million dollars. Um, Apple has supported the National Parks Foundation for this annual annual char- charitable event since 2017. It's going to run through the end of uh, actually next week as we record this in August here. So uh, it's great to great to see them do this, and they have they unlock a special national parks award uh, from the in the fitness app. So they really get to get engaged with this. Uh, what do you think, Jeff, on this? Um, I like that they do this, and um, um, yeah. Now I'm feeling like I need to go into an Apple store and try and find something that I can buy for less than $10. So Apple donates more than the cost of what I bought to, uh, to the national parks. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Chuck? Uh, You know, I think this is great. It's uh, first of all, it supports uh, the, the, the national parks, which is definitely something worthwhile. But it also is one more time that they're encouraging people to get used to using Apple Pay. And maybe if you if you hadn't up to this point, maybe you would say, okay, I think I'll give it a try. I'll see, you know, see how how this works. 
And I, I, st- I love that because it fascinates me that I still have people comment on the fact that I pay at, at, the, at the register or wherever with, with my watch. And I, you know, it's like, well, that's so, to me, it's just now a routine, but to some people that are just not aware and you also get the inevitable questions of, well, how does it work? And is it secure? And I don't want to, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. And after you explain it to them a little bit, which we all do being geeks, um, mm-hmm. they say, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll go and check it out. Maybe this is one more way to help encourage people to go check it out. Absolutely. How about you, Ben? Um, I'm happy to support the national park system. And in fact, I might just, uh, go, uh, go on a spending spree for this. <laughs> well, that's, um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, that's for sure. Um, so, uh, uh then the next story here this uh, week, Tesla, for some reason, I guess apparently likes to, to have Apple as part of their in- interface. They have uh, over 20 Apple shortcuts actions. Uh, the Tesla app for the iPhone has now gained official support of Apple shortcuts with its latest update, version 4.24. Uh, the update to Tesla app brings over 20 shortcut actions, allowing users to get quick access to many of the vehicle's functions, issuing commands with the uh, S-Lady and creating automations and combining auto, uh, actions into, into complex workflows. Uh, for example, users can uh, simply uh, use a, a command Siri and uh, to lock their vehicle uh, for that. So, uh, Jeff, what do you think? This is something I was not very surprised that uh, Tesla is doing. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, since Tesla isn't going to go in with uh, full-on CarPlay support, and they know that iPhone users are uh, 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 very prevalent, and um, in the at least in the U.S., Doing something that uh, that makes the iPhone users happier about their Tesla experience, since it doesn't have CarPlay, makes sense. And giving them a way to do S Lady voice commands uh, for a lot of car functions that's that's a pretty big bone they're throwing out to to iPhone users. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. How about you, Chuck? Um, sort of the same thing to 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 jump on something that Jeff said earlier. Tesla owners are in the upward categories uh, of the financial spectrum uh, for the most part, and so if that if they own a Tesla, that means at least in theory they're more likely to own an iPhone. And so, why wouldn't you just try to please your customers? And I don't know how. I don't know enough about the programming of this kind of thing or the security issues behind it to know how much of an effort it took, but I wouldn't think it was a huge effort, especially if it, if these things, these features were already built into the system, uh, you just have to put a trigger on them. So yeah, I, it, it seems like a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Ben? Um, I mean, we're getting to a point where there is a large supply of viable uh, co- competition to Tesla, throwing their uh, a bone to their customers to keep them happy and being repeat buyers when their current Tesla, uh, well, comes up for uh, you know its little trip to uh, the next owner. Uh, it's just a smart business move. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and then uh, lastly, let's talk about Threads. Threads now has uh, added the web-based version of Access uh, to the social network. You, know, access, you can now access it on the desktop, uh, mobile devices uh, using any web browser. Uh, since it's the debut in this uh, last July, Threads has only been available through mobile devices through dedicated apps. So at launch, uh, you, it was very bare bones, but it's starting to expand. Looks like it's uh, been losing users that... Although they did have 100 million users there when it first came out, um, what do you think, Chuck, on this? Hey, I. Funny thing is, I, I kept reading articles today, and I could not get it to load the web interface until about four five minutes before showtime here. So I have not even logged into it. But to me, this was an essential piece of having this be taken seriously. 
um, as as a potential tool. Uh, we've seen brands start to appear on on threads, and I I just have a hard time believing that anybody but the most intensely interested uh, corporate user is sitting there posting things using their iPhone on threads. They're going to turn it over to their marketing department and let them you know do the posting. So getting that web interface up is is a critical step in having this be taken seriously. And now I'm and I'm anxious to log in and see what it looks like and see how quickly they can they can get their act together and get some of the other key features that are needed uh, right. to maybe maybe make it a serious threat to to Twitter or X or whatever. Yep. Doug, what do you think, Jeff? Um I I th- I think that this was a necessary move. And I think that uh, anyone that says, oh, well, they they only did this after the fact. No, they were working on this all along. I think they launched threads early because it, they were able to take advantage of uh, one of the, the many uh, implosions at uh, the service formerly known as Twitter. So, so yeah. this came along when they could get it out the door. Great. It will make it much easier for me to think about using it because sitting at my desk, I'm more likely to use threads as opposed to having to go through the app on my phone. Um, I'm assuming this is all uh, part of the process as well of of getting an API in place so that the marketing teams and uh, and PR teams that uh, that are doing a lot of social online for the companies they, they work for um they need this because it needs it needs to hook in to hootsuite or whatever other um uh soho social whatever that they're using to manage all of their their uh, social media presence so yeah if you're seeing more brands show up on threads um expect that to increase probably pretty soon yeah, pretty soon for sure. How about you, Ben? Um, yeah, I mean, getting back to what Jeff said, I I believe Zuckerberg did admit uh, during an interview this week that they did release it early uh, based on uh, certain troubles of their competition. Uh, but yeah, th- this is absolutely 100% necessary for threads to be a business uh, alternative to the artist formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, definitely going to be interesting. See where it goes. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. The beta this week, uh, Apple did see the seventh uh, betas of iOS 17, iPad OS 17 to developers and the public betas out as well. That was uh, about two days ago, two days ago as we record this. Um, of course you can go in and sign up, sign in and, and download and all that fine stuff, kind of stuff. Uh, uh, the big thing obviously was the, the, the end call button got moved for that one beta, but it moved back. I think, uh, it was safe to say that, uh, Apple got plenty of backlash on that and, uh, it's going to stay in its place. Although all the other, all the other buttons are, uh, moved around with it. So I'd be wondering is to know if, uh, if some are going to hit all those other buttons besides that. So, uh, so. We'll see where where it goes with that. Um, as I said, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. A um, couple of things that they've they've done is uh, they got the silent mode haptic fe- feedback. Beta six, there was a bug about it, and then then beta seven seems like it's back, and plus the vibration has changed si- slightly. So they're coming to find some other things. A little small, little subtle bugs. Uh, ben, have you seen anything as as you've been running it? Um, no, it seems pretty solid, uh, given that it. The current build ends with an A. I would be very surprised if we didn't see a release candidate right after the late, the uh, Labor Day holiday. Yeah, I, that that would be would be good because that means it's going to get real close. Because I believe September twelfth was the date to announce uh, the new iPhones. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, anything in the iPad uh, as far as that goes, uh, Jeff? It's still working. Which at this point, that the fact that I'm not seeing anything that's really standing out is good. 
it, yeah. it, it tells me that, uh, that the code is finally settling down and, uh, and they're, they're getting much closer to having something that, that they can release uh, about the same time as the new iPhone. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so definitely uh, going to be interesting to see where it goes. Uh, Chuck, any comments? I know you're not, you're not into beta, so. <laughs> I'm so tired of betas. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I can just get, get, release the darn thing and then give me a feature list. And this, this it's in, it's out, it's buggy, it's not buggy. Yeah. Just, just, let's just get to it. Um, you know, I, I, I admire Ben and, and, and Jeff for putting up with it. Um, I just, that's just not my thing. I haven't seen a beta feature that I couldn't wait until it gets baked properly that I couldn't live without. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Chuck, so. I I really am in the same boat as you as far as uh, as I've... being okay waiting for features. For me, uh, this is something that goes on my sacrificial iPad, and it's it's something that. I get to play with and experiment with and learn about so that, so that you don't have to. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. But if, yeah. if all I had were my production mach- machines, I wouldn't run beta on anything. Yes. Do, do oh. not be like me. No, don't do it. Yes. I do don't. this. So other people do not have to. Right. I have secondary yeah. devices as well. So that's all I do is run them on that. So. Yeah, and oh. and not to not to beat on beat on this too much, but yeah, you know, and I, I'm with you guys. Look, I, the one of the big factors to me is time. Yeah, you know, if I had time to sit there and play with it and, and figure out, okay, this this works, this doesn't, this crashes, this doesn't, um, it would be a it would be a lot of fun to play with. But the amount of time you suck up doing that, waiting, you know, going through, and and again, if we all appreciate it because you're helping make the product better. I'm just I'm not. But I'm becoming impatient, um, and I just get bored with every every media outlet announcing there's another new beta out. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you do get bored after time. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, I'll just uh, casually mention that uh, Watch OS 10 is uh, developers. Anything you notice on that, uh, Ben? Uh, you have that running too. I have it running too. Holy crap! Honestly, I have. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I, I'm. I, I'm very well aware of this fact. Okay, but honestly, that's one thing I won't. I haven't <laughs> seen a whole. Yeah, I haven't seen a whole lot of difference in any of the watch betas. Okay. Yeah, I really. I from what I'm reading, I haven't seen much either. So, but the, the widget interface that's a, that's a whole new thing, and you've been uh, enjoying that. I assume it's a, it's a much different than. Oh yeah. The, Oh um, yeah, so I'm actually wishing I had the Ultra now to for even more uh, space mm. on this thing. In fact, d- d- just give me an iPhone on my wa- on my wrist. <laughs> uh, so uh, other th- also TVOS 17 was released. Uh, not much on there. We know we've got the split view. It's happening. Uh, so you can uh, watch tell you can use you just watch television with friends and family using SharePlay. Uh, third-party apps like Zoom will also be available to take advantage of this functionality, and then Control Center's been revamped. So they've they've done a few things to to work through it. So, but uh, nothing huge and subtle. So, um, next topic I want to talk about here a little bit is uh, the eSIM. You know, when do we think that uh, the, that the physical SIMs days are numbered? Or are, are, are well, they are for the iPhone because the new newest fourteen series mm-hmm. phones don't, don't have physical SIMs anymore, unless you're in Europe. Um, so it's, a uh, it, it's, it's definitely, uh, an interesting thing of how that's going to play out. I, I found it to be very, very easy. I think all of us here have, uh, when they've, we've changed phones and moved on and moved it over to an mm-hmm. eSIM and, uh, mm-hmm. the process is just spectacular. You don't have to worry about a physical SIM card. If the SIM card fails, you're, you don't have to go get another one and pay for another one. And, um, and, uh, it just, it's just easy. And, and I've got on my iPhone as I have a second line, I, I, I've had, uh, I've got two lines on my iPhone. So, uh, so that works. So it makes it so much easier. You don't have to have to have two physical SIMs. How do you, how'd you do it before now? It's very easy to do it. Um, so it is an iPhone 13 or later that had eSIM. So that's, uh, that's, uh, 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 I'm sorry. I think I, I actually, I, I believe that yeah. it was at least a 13, uh, <laughs> 
that, that, I, iPhone 12 has eSIM. Oh, it does? Okay. Yes, so it does. The 12, the 12 and 11, I believe, did too. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the bigger thing is uh, traveling. How can, can you travel with an eSIM uh, very easily? And it all depends uh, where you are overseas. And and some some allow it. Like say, if you're traveling from the U.S. and U.K., you might want to talk with your provider to see if they offer offer international roaming options as part of your plan. Um, and you may not be able to because it wasn't like the like before when you would travel, you go buy a SIM and put it in your phone while you were traveling. Um, but I b- believe you can use a e SIM while you're traveling uh, abroad. You would have to assert which uh, where it is, and if and the other thing is if your iPhone is actually locked to um, to your carrier. Now, if it is, then then there's the problem. Um, and that's the that's actually the beauty of having the, the iPhone upgrade program is because uh, it, your phone is not locked to your carrier. So uh, if you decide you want to leave, you can. I mean, that's why I, that's a big big reason right there why I I I think is is the most ideal thing um, when it comes to uh, the eSIM and uh, being able to uh, have your carrier whatever carrier you prefer. So if I go travel someplace and I want to get one of the eSIMs used for while well, traveling, yeah, well, why not? It's super easy. Um, so, uh, I would think, I don't know what your, what your guys' thoughts on this, but it, but just is the eSIM, it, it, eSIM's here to stay. Uh, and, uh, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, and if anything, it's probably going to evolve even more. What are your thoughts on the eSIM, Jeff, and where we, uh, where, where, where they think they're going with it? Uh, you're right. eSIM is not going away and it, it has definite advantages over a physical SIM, um, w- one of the things that I like is that, like with the iPhone, you can have multiple eSIMs because um, it, it will store several of them. I can't remember how many it, it, it will store, mm-hmm. but uh, um, while you can have two active at any given time, you can have several others. So you can switch out which ones you're using depending on what, whatever your needs are. So there's a lot more flexibility in how you use your, your SIMs. Um, yeah. How how long before eSIM is the only thing? Well, that depends on all the, all the countries that, uh, that smartphones are being purchased in and, uh, and when they migrate over to, uh, to easy, reliable and ubiquitous eSIM support. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what about you, Chuck? You travel a lot. I mean, obviously, it's, you stay in the United States most of the time, but um, do you find it? Do you think it's going to be a good advantage uh, having eSIM when you travel? I, yeah, Dave. And, you know, I think if there are any rough spots, the carriers are going to smooth them out and for international travel as well, because that's not a small market. And I so if there are rough spots for many of in any of these areas, they're going to get smoothed out because. People want to make it seamless for you to buy their product. So it just seems like such a natural evolution. I mean, yeah. if you really think about it, you know, it's, it almost feels like you're a caveman, you know, trying to swap a, a regular SIM in and out. And, you know, you, you drop it. I mean, it's it's smaller than your thumbnail. So you drop it. And right. if, it, if, it, if it lands edge up somewhere, it's almost invisible. And, and so, you know, yeah. and you, you just you, you think about it. It was necessary. It made sense up to a point. But then when we were able to go to eSIM, all that stuff went away. And I think you said it in, as you were introducing this part, David, you know, it's easy to do. So, yeah. you know, once we get once we figure out where the rough spots are, I think they'll get smoothed out. And there's no reason to have have a physical SIM in, in a car, in a phone anymore, period. Yeah. They're they're always a pain to deal with in the first place. So when you want to take them out, you know, swap them, and yeah, I'm glad they went to this. Uh, d- what are your thoughts on on this, Ben? E sim, you're 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 sporting the 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 12 Pro Max, right? Mm-hmm. And you have you have yours running on eSIM? Yep. Oh yes, and I think uh, on newer devices, eSIM will actually be going away soon because right. I think Apple will be going to oh, E-SIM? its replace the iSIM which instead of being on a separate chip will be actually within the uh, secure element on the oh, iPhone. I didn't know about that. Cause that, I don't recall that being written up. Did, is that something new? Um, yeah, it, it's been talked about for a couple of years ago, a couple of years now. 
Give me just one second here while I get that, while I find that article for you. Uh, but it, the way it currently works, uh, the eSIM is why it's not on a little card is a physical, physically separate chip. The ISM pretty much takes it one step further hmm. and integrates okay. it into the system on chip. Okay. So it's kind of like Wi-Fi seven is coming up soon here <laughs> uh, that mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that, that, yeah, I found the article here on, uh, from, uh, it was last year, but uh, for, I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, it's interesting to see where this goes. Then this, this is, uh, like you said, it's, it's, it does, uh, it doesn't, it has an integrated surface card instead of, uh, the, the eSIM. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's good. That, that, and that's I a think good we could feature. actually see it as soon as this year. Interesting. I will right, make sure we have mm -hmm. a link in the show notes about that. I mean, I don't, I don't know much about that. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, ben. Um, and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look and, well, I'm sure, we'll be covering it uh, in the future, right? Um, so get your get your phones on eSIM if you're not already. Get off those uh, those SIM cards because uh, I would say sooner or later they're going to go away. Uh, and uh, a correction, yes, uh, um, the iPhone XS and XR. Thank you, Jeff. It was, was the first to add eSIM in the iPhone, so um, that's important to know. Um, so another thing I want to talk about is uh, is the Apple Pencil. Uh, Apple's pencil has been, is awesome. And I know Jeff loves using his Apple pencil, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, doing lots since he is a creative designer of some, uh, a, a, as, as, as well as uh, using it for lots of other things. Um, and there, there, there always been, uh, folks that coming out with alternative, uh, uh, pencils than what the app, what Apple re released. And I found this one interesting that this, this was just kind of, this was just announced, um, uh, about last week as we record, uh, this is from uh, Zag, Z A G G. It's a new Pro Stylus Two. It it takes on that Apple Pencil, but it has uh, it also has the magnetic charging, so it's taking advantage of that as well as it's got some fun colors on it too. Uh, and um, it it uh, it does have uh, different uh, pencil uh, pencil tips, and you can uh, charge it wirelessly. Even Qi Charge will, will work with it, so it's kind of cool. So um, this this is this is a nice alternative. I know Logitech has said their 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 versions, which I never was too excited about. Did you try any of the? the, the I don't. We haven't tried this one yet because it's new. But have you tried any of the alternate pencils, Jeff? If besides the Apple pencil before, I have, and the uh, the Logitech one, which which I totally appreciate why it wouldn't have been your thing. That to me has been the best of the alternatives because mm -hmm. Logitech designed it in uh, in collaboration with with Apple. Okay. Um, and uh, which is why it works so seamlessly uh, between iPads. And um, so it, it's a good option, but, uh, but for you, for me, for our type of use cases, probably not the best option. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying out the Zag because they're the, the features that we get in Apple pencil too. Mm -hmm. to me that's our baseline now and so i went to see how the the zag holds up to, in in comparison um i do like that it's multiple colors and i do like that you have uh um chi charging as an option um and even though it has a a power switch as i recall i don't see that as a problem um it's for for what you're getting having to hit a power button to wake it up doesn't seem like that big of a deal. And the power button is actually the end where it's like the, the eraser end. Mm -hmm. So it's more like, uh, like having a, a ballpoint pen in that aspect where you click the end and, and um, wake yeah. up your pen on well, that. Now you can do it with your pencil. Anyhow, I'm looking forward to getting a hold of one of these and trying it out. Yeah. Chuck, you don't, you, I remember you don't like, you really, you don't have, do you have an Apple pencil? You've not ever wanted to uh, use it, right? Um, you know, I had an Apple pencil too. Um, I gave it to uh, someone in my family who was actually had a use case for it and yeah. then found myself wishing I had it back to play with. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and this is kind of shaky, but I went and bought um, a, a knockoff ripoff. No, not, not ripoff, just a knockoff Apple pencil that doesn't have the pressure sensitivity, 
but that performs, you know, all the very, very basic function, has magnetic charging, um, and and comes in colors, if that makes a difference to anyone. Mm -hmm. And I find for me, because I'm not doing anywhere near the level of sophistication that Jeff is, um, it's fine for those few occasions that I want or need an Apple Pencil. And I paid, I was just looking it up, um, I paid $28, $29 for it um, on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. So, Chuck, if, if you're writing and maybe fast diagrams, what you got is more than sufficient. You exactly. don't need to spend $120 mm -hmm. on something that has the full range of sensitivity and recognizes the pencil angle. You, you didn't need that. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. so I, I, I found that, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know why, I guess I was... I want to get the value out of this one. And I never I just didn't with the Apple, with the Apple pencil. So I've been very happy with this. Uh, so you know, it's in, and I just saw the zag is, is like $80. Um, this, this was what I'd say 29. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, you know, the right tool for the right person for the right task. Mm -hmm. right? You know, that's, that's good enough. I don't, I'm not going to be doing sketch noting of any sophistication, um, but sometimes it's nice to be able to do a little bit. So basically I have, I have a notepad and, and pen now with my iPad, uh, because of course, you know, in a piece of paper and a pencil or, or a pen, you don't have the pressure sensitivity and all that. Um, right. so I've got exactly what I need and, but, but for, for anybody that has a more sophisticated use case, this looks like a nice option. So. Yeah. Go for it. Absolutely. Ben, do you use an Apple Pencil? Um, I I used to use, well, probably the same knockoff that Chuck does. Yeah. Um, I have absolutely no artistic ability. <laughs> but I have to say, this Zag looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, I, it gives you kind of that same more, you know, number two slash ballpoint pen uh feel to it with maybe a, a few more uh features absolutely for a lot more money <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah and it, pro sure. it, it probably should be said too that zag is one of those reputable companies that you feel like is going to do a great job or, or they're not going to put the product out so this is definitely oh, yeah. worth a look as an alternative Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I I would I wouldn't pay uh, eighty dollars for the uh, for JoJo that I bought. Zag, <laughs> yeah, they have the uh, they have the name to justify that kind of price. Yeah, yeah. Um, other th other uh, interesting thing I saw here too. Uh, Astropad, who is the makers of uh, Luna Display, which uh, and they have other other things uh, that they make as well, came out with a, a new uh, feature or new product called Rock Paper Pencil. And what it is, it's an iPad screen protector with an Apple Pencil tip, and it's designed to be uh, giving you a more realistic paper feeling. Um, I found this to be interesting. I don't know um, how that would how how uh, there are a lot of people out there. To but I like to have something like that. Uh, and it's just a screen protector that works with what's called nano technology, texture technology that uh, mimics the texture of paper and also cuts down on glare. While the Apple pencil tip is made from a metal from metal and similar in design to a ballpoint pe uh, pen tip. Uh, and it says that it's making it more precise than the Apple pencil. I don't know. I find this to be interesting. What do you think, uh, Jeff? Would it be something you want to do with the, having a real paper like this is? Holy crap, I want this so bad. Okay, here, only, here's the deal. It, it's cheap too, 31 bucks. <laughs> I know, th this is a shocking thing to me. Um, um, anyhow, I need to get a hold of this. So I already have uh, 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 products from a company called Pen Tips. Mm -hmm. And they they started by making what, what I was calling Apple Pencil condoms. And it was these little silicone tips that go over <laughs> the Apple Pencil tip. And they were great, but they... You, um, I would lose them over time and which is fine because they wear out anyhow. And then they released replacement Apple pencil tips that have a, a more natural feel more, um, as a, less of a plastic on glass feel. And, uh, and I mean, seriously, 
I, I know Apple says the Apple pencil tip, it really feels like you're drawing on paper. No, it doesn't. No, it, doesn't. it feels like you're using plastic on glass. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so so pen tips, they came out with with these alternate uh tips for Apple Pencil, and they came out with uh with um the nano uh texture sheet protector or screen protector thing like um uh what what um astropad is doing where it's magnetic yep. and the combination with pen tips it's really nice except that the tips are too soft and they and they tear apart too fast or at least a lot faster than i expect they should Mm-hmm. Um, but the screen protector part, I mean, it's really great because you put it on when you need it, you take it off when you don't, um, which which means basically anytime I'm using my iPad, the screen protector's on. If uh, if one of the kids that, that's, that's part of my life is going to be doing anything on it, all of that comes off because it'll be destroyed way too fast. Anyhow, AstroPad doing this at the price points they're doing um, – I am so in and I really want to try this out and I want to feel that pen tip for fun. I just went and looked at the pen dot tips website and they clearly are aware of what AstroPad is doing because yeah. they are now showing the replacement tips at 60% off and the screen protector at 30% off. So wow. those price changes they have to be in response to what AstroPad is doing. Anyhow, Gotta I'm be. looking forward to getting hold of this. It's good to see that because AstroPad's a great company and uh, they, they are have some great, great products here. So, yeah. And um, you remember years ago when they came out with their little dongle so that you mm-hmm. could use your iPad yeah, as, a, as a separate display? I still have mine. And I even was able um, to. To of course, do it's testing, at my hand. With a my are, there's the box. <laughs> yep, I recognize that box. Um, somewhere in one of the boxes <laughs> that's that's uh, stashed away here, I have one of the original prototypes where it's the board, and instead of having the nice uh, cover over it, it's like been dipped in silicon or something, just oh. just to protect the components. Yeah. And it's this clear little thing that if you didn't know what it was, you wouldn't know what it is. It's just really cool to have that. Anything, uh, Tucker, uh, Ben, you want to add to that before we move on? Um, yeah, I mean, this is unlike the last thing. This is something that you do not have to be an artist to to use. Um, I ha- I used kind of a janky situation when I had my iPad Air, where I had a textured screen protector over a glass screen protector. Um, mm-hmm. But this seems like it's a much better solution, and you, 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 for the uninitiated, you wouldn't think that a textured screen protector would give you that much of a difference of a feel. Yeah, it's it does. Huge. Yeah, it's, I find it incredibly difficult to create art on my yeah. iPads. I'm mm-hmm. just going to talk over everyone right now because I'm way too excited about this. <laughs> I stuff. know. I, I figured you were. Um, yeah, I, I cede the floor to you, Mister Gavin. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Mister Raythick. Um, anyhow, the the whole drawing experience on an iPad I find to be incredibly frustrating, unless yeah. I have a good screen protector on there that that can simulate the feel of paper. There's so much that's tactile about creating art yeah. on it uh, in general. And so much of that I, I feel is lost on, on the iPad. So yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. I see yeah, the even, to you, Mr. Rathig. Yeah. It <laughs> even makes a, a gigantic difference for basic writing. Oh if, yeah. Yeah. If you're using a stylus at all, you need a textured uh, film on top of your iPad period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I got nothing. I got I, yeah, <laughs> I thought this was great. I I was fully expecting we to get geek out here on Apple Pencil. I'm so glad we did. So, oh, dude, how much time do you have? Because yeah, all of I it. know, I know. You can keep we'll going. be here till the Mac show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Um, 
This week, I wanted to do a little bit of in touch with Mac OS. I'd, I'd like to touch on the Mac OS a little bit uh, from time to time. Uh, two things I want to talk about real quick is uh, well, Mac OS Sonoma is is uh, it's in beta six. They just started really they released that. There's not a ton of of, of big um, new things that are, there is there because uh, I th- I think there and a lot of people have been saying that Mac the Sonoma is is just a kind of like a small updates really i mean i don't see apple has gotten real aggressive at getting this up to date but i mean it's cool and all they've, you know, they've changed some they'll put some widgets in place and a lot of other things i don't want to get too much into it but really what i was excited about and i was wanted to talk about is parallels now i use parallels desktop all the time because i like to have a windows version on my mac so whenever i do have to access anything in windows i think it's uh nice to have so i don't have to have a dedicated uh machine to do that well uh Parallels came out with version 19. It's it brought some notable features uh, in, perf- in performance enhancements, and I'm already already seeing it. Uh, the best part is the Touch ID integration. I, I couldn't believe they in- were able to integrate it. And I just I don't know if any of you guys have tried this yet, but excuse me. When I launched Windows 11, I, I can I, I launched it up on my on my Silicon map, and there it was. I didn't have to put the PIN number anymore. I do to touch my Touch ID on my my Touch ID uh, 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 Apple Magic keyboard and uh, Voila, I don't have to use a, uh, a password, which is, is pretty awesome. Um, and uh, they did optimize the compatibility with, with the Mac OS Sonoma. In fact, I this is the first time since uh, so Apple Silicon Macs have come out that uh, you were actually able to get the uh, developer beta downloaded and actually install it right directly. You didn't have to, you couldn't even, because you really couldn't even do an upgrade. Uh, you, you, had, you had to uh, do it direct. Now, there are a couple hoops you got to go through to get it to work but uh all in all i think it's a really good experience and uh um glad to see that 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 parallels is continuing to evolve with this product because uh there there, there are still a lot of people out there who want to have virtualization available not necessarily windows you also could do it with linux and 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 like i said mac os as well so uh, being able to test things uh on on a different in a different environment not everybody needs that but um i think it's uh something that uh, is really great. And I, and I've been a parallels user for a long, long time. And I think this is probably the, one of the better uh, versions that they've, uh, they've come out with in, in quite some time. So uh, did you guys have any uh, thing to add with the parallels? I don't know. If, I don't think any of you use it or I don't know, Ben, you've dabbled in the, in the virtual uh, with parallels. Um, A little bit. I haven't been entirely uh, happy compared to an old boot camp. Uh, install, yeah. but it's definitely getting better. It is to the point where I might actually try see if there's a free trial available. There is trial. You can try it out. Yeah, they'll let you check it out. So um, check that out. Uh, Chuck, do you have anything to add about that? Not, not really. I mean, it just seems seems logical that as soon as somebody could do this, they would. Um, yeah. Because, and, and I'm thinking, and in some ways, and of course, it's iOS, so it's a poor comparison. But my banking app has Face ID, so that I don't have to put in anything. Once I authorize it and you know jump right. through the few hoops, you know it it recognizes, and then maybe once every couple of months I have to, you know, re-sign in. So it, but 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 that's an iOS device. This is a Mac mm-hmm. device. So it begs the question, you know, is this something that we might see come to Mac OS itself? Yeah, possible. We'll see. Any thoughts on, the on this? Yeah, that would be, be interesting. Any thoughts on this, Jeff? Um, I just ordered my rock paper pencil. That's okay. that's my <laughs> thoughts on that. I figured. You know, I, I could I could elaborate on what Chuck and Ben said, but uh, I feel it would just be iterative. So seriously, they they nailed it. So, in other words, you'd rather take us back to the last story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so well, anyhow. I'm going to bring, but I'm going to bring a last story. Actually, it's going to be an app for this oh. week. So, uh, but maybe next time. Uh, the uh, uh, Good Notes, if anybody is here using the Good Notes app, Good Vote Notes version six, a couple of weeks ago, they released that the version six, it brings AI powered handwriting, spell check, and uh, autocomplete features. It's very popular, note taking an app and PDF editor on the iPad, Good Notes. It's a big major update in four years, and so it's been a long time since they've done anything with the, with uh, updates, which includes um, AI powered handwriting recognition features, a marketplace for digital stationery, and new new pen gestures, and all kinds of other stuff. Um, 
So the, they actually asked, uh, no, Jeff would appreciate this, uh, having, uh, including Scribble to Erase, Circle to Lasso. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the in, in-app marketplace allows you to download new templates. Um, so uh, they really uh, were really awesome with this. And they also include, I guess, lastly, that this version includes an interactive exam prep materials for the SAT and other standardized tests with built-in hints and AI math assistance for to identify errors. Hmm. That's interesting. Nice. So this actually works on iOS, iPad OS, and Mac OS. So all three, uh, it's available on that, those platforms now. It is free to use up to three notebooks, and then you can get the full suite of uh, features can be unlocked with unlimited notebooks for nine ninety nine per year or subscription. But you know, for twenty nine ninety nine for it's a one time purchase, that's not a bad deal. And I, I, I did have Good Notes five, so it upgraded right to six, so it'll continue to work great. Guys, any thoughts? I know Jeff, does this? Do you use Good Notes? Um. I switched back and forth between good notes and notability for a long time and yep. and uh, ultimately settled on notability um and and if I was doing the same thing today I might actually set settle on good notes instead um but what they've added in here th- this is really great and it's it's a clear indicator that they have not lost the focus on who their core uh, user is. So uh, I, I'm glad to see stuff like this happening. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up for this week. Uh, that is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, which is feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at intouchwithios, as well as on Mastodon at intouchwithios. Support the show by buying me a coffee at intouchwithios.com slash coffee. We would really appreciate it. You can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com slash intouchwithios. We have two tiers available to support the show. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we're uh, live streaming on our YouTube channel, which is Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, on our YouTube ta- channel at youtube.com slash intouchwithios. Web Bixby, I saw you in the chat uh, tonight. Thanks for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Um, you can also watch all the uh, the past live streams as well as listen to live uh, past uh, listen to past shows. Uh, go to In Touch with iOS Magazine on Flipboard, where many of the topics we discuss are flipped into that magazine. The link is in our show notes. You can subscribe in to the show in your favorite podcatcher, including Pocket Casts, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, and many others. Better yet, just go to our website, InTouchWithiOS.com, where you can all the links to all the ways to listen to us. They're uh, they're over there. I am Dave Ginsburg. You can find me on Mastodon at DaveG65 at Mastodon.club. And Chuck Joyner, as always, so great to have you. Uh, where can people find you? Thank you, Dave, for having me. Uh, MacVoices.com is where you'll find everything. Um, let's see. We do Mac Voices Live Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, with pretty much everyone here and web and a, a host of other people. Cast um, of thousands. <laughs> well, not thousands, but hundreds. Um, <laughs> uh, that's 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are. We'd love to have you join us at youtube.com slash Mac Voices TV. And on all the socials, hopefully by the t- after we get off the show, I'll be on threads on, on the web um, as at Chuck Joyner. Thank you for having me, Dave. It's always a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. Ben Rathick, always great to have you on the show. Uh, where can people find you? Well, Dave, you can find me at Ben Rathick on social media. I would list them all, but it, then it really would be the Mac show tomorrow before I was done. <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, at Rathick.tech, my website. On uh, Tuesdays, uh, Mr. Chuck Joyner show. And on uh, Thursdays and Fridays, the Big and Mac shows on the British Tech Network uh Hosted by this Jeff Gamut guy in the interim. Yep. Speaking of that guy, the, this is Jeff Gamut. Thanks for being here as well. How people can find you? Uh, well, thanks for yet again let it, letting me back on. Uh, I, I really do have an awesome time hanging out with all of you. Um, all right. So on social media, I'm Jay Gamut. As Ben pointed out, there's like a jillion uh, social media platforms. So that's who I am on basically all of them. Um, the ones I'm active on right now, Mastodon and Instagram, uh, maybe now a little bit more in threads because it'll be easier. We'll see. Um, then for the shows, well, um, 
somehow, for some reason, Chuck keeps letting me back on Mac Voices Live. So thanks for that, Chuck. Dave, you keep letting me back on In Touch With iOS, so thank you for that. Um, Ewan Rankin hasn't caught on yet, so I get to continue being the interim host on the big show on the British Tech Network on Thursdays and then the Mac show on Fridays. And then Brian Chaffin and I record The Context Machine, and then uh, I show up on other people's shows periodically, too. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Chuff. And thank you for listening. We appreciate you uh, joining us for the show this week. And we'll talk again soon.